Have you ever wanted to make a video on a cool shader feature, but you only actually know one use for it, and when you go to look up on Google other things that you can do with it, everybody else only seems to also have one use for it? Anyway, hello all the crazy people out there. My name is Michael, I like wizards and dragons and making games, and let's talk about barycentric coordinates. So, uh, barycentric coordinates are actually something that I've talked about in passing on this channel before, uh, in the context of 3D collisions, and uh, the way that they work in shaders is actually pretty similar, except obviously when you... Um, the process of using them in the shader is a little bit different than it is in um, in 3D collision code. So what a barycentric coordinate is, is let's say that we have a triangle. I'll just superimpose a triangle on this image right now. And let's say that uh, it has three points, obviously, and you want to know uh, either in the vertex shader which vertex are processing currently, or in the fragment shader you want to know uh, which vertex are closest to. You can do that by assigning a vector 3 to each of the three vertices, and the first vertex is going to have a uh, vector 3 containing 1, 0, 0. The second vertex is going to have a vector 3 containing 0, 1, 0. And the third vertex is going to have a vector 3 containing 0, 0, 1. And then when you're in the vertex shader, if you want to know which vertex you're currently processing, you can simply look at that vector 3 and figure it out. Or if you're in the fragment shader and if you want to know which uh, vertex are closest to or otherwise approximately where you are on the triangle, uh, you can look at the interpolated value that you would get if you... Um, if you pass the uh, barycentric coordinate to the fragment shader with varying. In 3D collisions, this is useful when, for example, you are trying to cast a ray into a triangle because you can um, first cast a ray into the, uh, the plane of the triangle and then you can use the hit location. You can figure out the barycentric coordinate of the hit location to figure out if you are within the bounds of the triangle or not. And in shaders, this is mostly used if you want to calculate an outline on the fly and you don't want to have to do anything weird with like line lists or anything like that. I'll get to that probably in another video because I want to keep this short. Anyway, uh, let us go over to the um, to the Game Maker project. Unfortunately, this is not something that you can just automatically do in just like when you submit a vertex buffer, when you submit any old vertex buffer. I wish it was, but alas, uh, that's what we're stuck with. I believe in some graphics APIs that are newer than whatever the like OpenGL 1.1 version that Game Maker uses is actually do have ways of doing that, but I'm not sure. And since I I'm making videos on Game Maker. I will not trouble myself with that right now. Uh, so we are going to have to to reformat these vertex buffers that we're drawing to um, to include this information. And there's two real main ways of doing this. Uh, one is to go up to your vertex format, and you can add extra data. You can add an extra uh, vertex format, add normal or whatever, or just a generic uh, three floating point numbers to your vertex format, and you can. Um, you can simply add an extra vertex attribute to your vertex format like that, and that's... it'll work. You can totally add whatever you want to the vertex format that you're using, but I haven't made videos on that in the past, and I probably won't get around to it for at least a little while, so I'm not going to talk about it right now. And, um... It's a little more complicated than you might think, but if you know how to do it, then you can probably figure out where to go from here. Uh, or... If the concept of assigning a number from 0 to 1 on one of three values on each vertex sounds a little bit kind of sort of like a like a color attribute, uh, you can totally just recycle the vertex color information. You can totally just use the uh, stick to barycentric coordinate in the vertex color attribute. And since that will also provide a nice visual metaphor for what we're doing today, uh, that is what I am going to do. Just keep in mind that uh, barycentric coordinates are not inherently related to color. Uh, this is mostly just a visual metaphor that I'm going to be using, and obviously if you want to use vertex color for, like, actual vertex color, uh, then this is something that you won't really be able to make use of. So I'm going to go down here. I'm going to do something a little bit actually similar, I think, to the, um, when I did vertex buffer to wireframe not too long ago, uh, which I guess is appropriate because uh, this is also something that can be used to generate wireframes from a vertex buffer, just in a somewhat different way. Uh, I'm going to duplicate this. I'm going to say vertex buffer. I'm going to call this function burf vertex buffer add barycentric or something like that. Um, it's going to, uh, the way this is going to be set up is going to be vb uh, tree barycentric. It's going to be an array that's basically going to mirror. Um, mirror the first array. So each of these tree vertex buffers is going to be cloned and it is going to have the barycentric um, coordinate information added where the vertex color would be and it's going to return a new vertex buffer and 
I should really just call this like Barry or something because I'm gonna get really tired of typing that out by the end of this video. Um, each of the tree structs that we're, uh, that we're going to be placing in the room, that we're going to be randomly generating in the room, is going to have not only the, uh, the regular vertex buffer with the regular color information, but it's also going to have the, um, the barycentric version. So that's going to be basically the copy. And I'll get to drawing that in a minute. But first, uh, vertex buffer add, um, add barycentric. And we can, once again, iterate over uh, each of the vertices in the vertex buffer that we loaded. If you've never messed with a vertex buffer by iterating over the data inside it, uh, it's a useful skill to have. I have made a video on that in the past as well. And we're going to loop over the vertex buffer and we're going to extract information. We're going to extract the position, normal text cord, and the color information uh, from each uh, vertex in each triangle. And if I want to change the color information, uh, at the end, by the way, uh, you probably saw and you can probably guess, um, the, uh, the vertex information is just fed back into a new vertex buffer. Um, I actually only need three of these because we're not uh, gener generating wireframe coordinates. And we're essentially rebuilding the same vertex buffer, uh, but we're going to make some modifications to um, point A's red, green, blue, point B's red, green, blue, and point C's red, green, blue. So, and I have to bring this up every time it comes up, vertex add point is a helper script that I wrote that will just automatically do these four vertex position, 3D, vertex normal, text coordinate, and color operations in a single line of code because it is a pain typing that out um, the long way every single time. And a lot of people have no idea what the vertex add point script is for. And that's a little bit weird because that's by far not the most complicated thing that I've ever done in a video. Anyway, so I'm going to change um, triangle uh, point A's red value to one. Uh, it's going to be a G is going to be zero and a B is going to also be zero. Now, because we are kind of hacking this around with uh, color values, with um, like color attributes, um, the red, green, and blue color values that go into each vertex in GML, they're going to have values between zero and 255, but in the shader, they're going to be divided by 255 automatically. And if you want to actually have a value of one for a, uh, for a color value in the shader, uh, you're going to need to make sure that it actually is set to 255 in, in GML. It's just a uh, constant thing to be aware of that you have to convert uh, to and from like that. Um, triangles point V, uh, point B, um, red is going to be BR is going to be zero, uh, BG is going to be one. Again, that's going to need to be 255. And B, um, B, that one took me a minute to figure out, is also going to be zero. Uh, so that is going to be indexed with, as the second, um, the second vertex, and triangle vertex C is going to be 0, 0, and 255, and that is going to give us um, 0, 0, 1 on this point in the fragment shader. And when I run this, uh, it's actually not going to draw anything because I don't have it drawing anything. I should probably have it draw something. Um, in, where is it? Down here. Um, I want to be able to swap between them, so I'll say if keyboard check a VK tab, then we can draw the version of the trees with the barycentric coordinates. I'm just going to copy this, um, this for loop here, and we can, um, we can draw the VBuff with the barycentric coordinate. And this is going to look pretty much what you think it's going to look like. We're going to have, um... I hit the tab key. Uh, each of the triangles in each of the trees that we're drawing are going to be basically indexed. And one vertex is going to be red, another vertex is going to be green, another vertex is going to be blue. Um, as you can see, the reds, greens, and blues do not necessarily all connect to each other, so the, like, the triangles aren't sorted in any particular way. Um, for one, that's not possible in every single configuration of triangles that you might step into a vertex buffer, just mathematically to color them like that. And two, it's good to remember that So, the uh, the pirate ship, the ground, and the uh, the sphere models here do not have uh, barycentric information attached to them. I could, you could do that if you want, if you want to see what that looks like. Um, this is not something that 
automatically is going to work with sprites or anything like that, since Game Maker manages the building of vertex buffers out of sprites and tile maps for you. Although it is possible, uh, there is a function called Draw Sprite General, which will allow you to give a different vertex color to each of the four corners of a sprite, which you can use for this kind of thing. And as far as an introduction to barycentric coordinates goes, um, that's pretty much it. It's pretty simple. Uh, when you go into your shader that you're drawing with, you probably... Where is it? It's um, the same shader that I use to draw everything else. It's probably a good idea if you're using barycentric coordinates for anything to, instead of calling uh, the, ver the vertex like values and the vertex, um, like the varying values color, it is probably a good idea to call them something more aligned to uh, barycentric, just so that you can tell like, just so that you can remember what it is. And then of course you have to update the, uh, the variable name everywhere else too, which is fun. That's just like good code practices to follow uh, to make your own life less painful. I'm not going to do anything further with shaders and barycentric coordinates today. Uh, like I said, I wanted this to be a bit of an, an easier, faster video because the uh, the Christmas holidays approach and I don't know how much time I'm going to have to, uh, to work on Game Maker stuff for a few weeks until really after MagFest. But soon I do want to make a third video on, um, on wireframes in 3D in Game Maker. And that, uh, that third video on wireframes in 3D in Game Maker will feature barycentric coordinates and we will use those to figure out uh, whether or not we are on or close to an edge on a triangle. So, uh, this really does not have a lot of changes made to it. I guess I did add the vertex buffer add barycentric function, so there's, there's that. Uh, but if you want the code for this, look for the GitHub repository down in the video description. If you want to see more coverage of some of the weirder things you can do in Game Maker, such as weird shader stuff and weird 3D stuff, feel free to subscribe. I normally try to post about two game dev videos a week, but as I mentioned, the uh, Christmas holidays might make that a little bit uh, complicated for a little while, and in any case, I'm not going to be spinning up a new uh, Let's Make a Game project for probably about two months or so. I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute to the channel, links to that can be found in all the usual places. Otherwise, I hope you all found that useful, and I will see you all later. Special thanks to Army Armbuster, DJ Gibbles, Edward Holt, Game Maker, Harold Guidry, Jonathan Bernardez, Kiexi, Sindra Larson, Square Crowd, The Oz, and Zenjamin for supporting these videos. If you want to support the channel, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.